Hillstead looking to throw deep, has a man, and that ball intercepted. Intercepted by Takeo Hansen in the end zone. One that he bobbled, but brought down while on his back. And Hansen creates the turnover. Welcome in Deseret News Rewind. Dusty Litzter, Dane Stewart, as always, presented by Hyde and Associates, brought to you by the Utah National Guard and outfitted by Black Clover. Yeah, and uh, Dusty, we're, we're twinsies oh, today. Matchy, huh? matchy. I, uh, I sent him the text early this morning. He's like, wear your blue. <laughs> hey, uh, we're wearing our new outerwear from Black Clover. And uh, if you want to check out the lineup, go to blackcloverusa.com. Full lineup of men's and women's gear. Use the promo code DNR20 for 20% off your first order. Or you can swing by the store just off 123rd South in Draper next to the water park. You know, one thing we haven't talked about, too, about hats. If you're a college fan, we know almost yeah. all of you are, BYU, Utah, Utah State, all have lines with yeah. Black Clover. Go get yourself a Live Lucky hat with your favorite college on it. Um, and again, use DNR20, get 20% off. Go in the store, let them, let, us, let them know that we sent you. Yeah. And they'll still take care of you that way too. Yeah. So uh, help us out by helping them out. Uh, how about at week eight? Well, we're at Riverton. We'll get to why yeah. in a little bit later, and you'll know why. But, uh, but we had a great week. But let's get to a couple of things. Some news came out. Let's get to the opening statement brought to you by Heidemann and Associates. Any law needs whatsoever, setting up a business, if you've got questions about bad investments, anything, Justin Heidemann's there to help you. Yeah, and law offices up and down the Wasatch Front, down in St. George as well. He'll take care of you. Call 801-754-4240 for a free consultation from Heidemann and Associates. Now, all of our St. George coverage should really help out that Heidemann Associates <laughs> office. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's get to this. Information came out this week. And yeah. So we're in week eight. We're in the last regular season month of the season. Awesome. Um, but what came out was information about the state tournaments. Now, for 2A, 3A, not a lot changed as far as home sites and where things will be, southern Utah. But 4A, 5A, 6A, we saw some interesting news. Yeah, we did. And uh, to me, Dusty, I'm going to start with what's most impactful. Well, actually, let's start classification, right? Yep. Let's go top down, huh? Let's start 6A. Uh, not going to be playing at the U this year. Get it? I was like, whoa, wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, the interesting thing is, is we don't know where that's going to be played yet. And in, in you know, talking with the association, sites to be determined is going to stay up north uh, and likely to be played at a local high school field up here. And just so that you know, they, they've been working with multiple facilities. They didn't just reach out to the U. They talked with every Division One stadium here, including some other professional stadiums. And at the end of the day, they're having to mitigate this circumstance as well. And there's some other external factors as well that really limited the availability of some of the venues here in the state. And so it goes back to the executive committee and for 6A they say, hey, we wanna play in the region where our schools are. And so we'll figure out where that's gonna be. And we'll certainly let you know as we hear, as that gets determined and you can always go to uhsaa.org to figure out where that is and when it gets announced. So that's a really impactful change, obviously for the 6A semis and championships, those to be at neutral fields up here in the northern part of the state. Yeah, so home sites through the quarterfinals Correct. and then semifinals to be determined, yep. but will be up here. Championship as well. Yeah, at a high school game, yeah. And Correct. the championship game as well at a high school here yeah. north. 5A is the five A is the most interesting one. Yes. And um, and this is why we're talking about this because there's opinions and there's reasons and there's all kinds of things. And we know that we can provide both sides and we're not taking a side. By the way, we'll have all these games for you right here on Deseret News Rewind. Um, will be everywhere for you, yep. including where 5A semifinals and championships will be. And I think that's the biggest thing. 5A semifinals and championships will, will be where, Dane? Well, Dusty, look, we both talk about a certain place that we love to go, and there's no better place to go in November than St. George, Utah, and the 5A semis and championships scheduled to be slated at Dixie State University. And so, uh, you know, it was a venue that was willing to have them, and they're going to combine that with another classification. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But for 5A, going to be hitting the road and heading down south. Now, I know a lot of parents, family, friends are going to be like, I don't want to drive down there. Why are we doing that? It's what they decided to do. And when you look at it, there aren't a lot of other venues available here. So you can do something local like that, or you can try to, to you know, pack the road. And I have no problem going to St. George in November. I'm kind of excited. Well, I think the interesting part is the semifinals and championship. Because I think championship, okay, yeah, I got it. Semifinals is the interesting one because yeah. there's a lot of things to it. Because you can do what 6A is doing and what 4A is doing. 4A is going to be home sites in the semifinals. Yeah. 5A is the only one that is going to go to a off-site neutral site, right? 
that you're going down south where there's not any 5A schools. You're going to play the semis at Dixie State. Drive the kids down there, hotel rooms too, and everything else to go down there to play semifinals and championship game. I think that's the biggest head nodder, yeah. scratcher to me that that's the decision when you could play it at a home site or probably a neutral field within the valley. Yeah, so here's the other side of that coin, right? And when we talk about football playoffs in past years, oftentimes we talk about this court or the semifinals and what a big deal it is to make it to the U, right? To get that semifinal, go play in the college venue, go feel like you accomplished something, right? That your season had this, you know, ultimate goal that you're just right on the cusp of being able to obtain. And I feel like, you know, one of the things that this does do is it does still allow that feeling for players, right? Hey, we're going to bust you down. You're going to spend the night in a hotel. You're going to go play in a college stadium, Dixie State, one that's growing uh, quite significantly right now. And it's not going to be the U, but, you know, it's, it's still a college venue. It's going to be a D1 facility here in a couple of years. And so, you know, it does still give you that feeling as a player, as a coach, as a team, as parents that, hey, look at our season, right? Like all the work we've put in, we made it to the semifinals and, and we actually get to go enjoy the fruits of that in a major venue, as opposed to kicking it off at a home site where it just feels like week 10 again. Yeah, just interesting. I, I just find that part interesting that the yeah. semis are down there. Now the championship game is there as well, yeah. which I get, I get that part. The semifinals is the one where I honestly, I'm not, na I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not, yeah. I just look at it and say, is that really the best situation? I don't want to go into all the details of why. I think you all can think of them, but it's just a, it's a tough one for me. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. But just so you know, we'll be there, but, uh, but that's a tough one. And I think the Activity Association, again, nothing's easy. Yeah. That's what I always go back to. I, don't, I might not understand. We may not agree, and that's totally fine. By the way, you don't have to agree with someone to get along with them. <laughs> I love that. I get along. We talk to the Activity Association people a lot. Rob Cuff, yeah. Rob Clough, John Oglesby, all the guys we work with there are terrific, and they're understanding, and they get it. But we can disagree, and that's okay. I disagree putting it down there. I just the yeah. semifinals. Yeah. I think that's a tough thing to do and a weird one um, at that. Well, and I'll throw you one other thing here, and we, we won't get into this, but folks, we had 10 games this week that got canceled, right, due to COVID. We're not out of this thing. We're still going to have to manage this through the playoffs. Right. Through the playoffs. So for the next several weeks, folks, keep your masks on. Stay socially distant. We got our glass here. We're, we're doing our best it to be is. safe. Yeah. We all want to get to that championship game. And the last thing we want to do is have any games, teams, that are unable to play in a playoff scenario. So everyone still do your part. Be conscientious of who you're around. If you know you're gonna be around kids on a football team or whatever, please you know, take extra precautions. Let's get through this thing. We may disagree with where it is and yeah. why and whatnot, but the ultimate goal is to have a championship weekend. We're trying to get there and let's do our part. Let's do our part, that's an interesting one. So let's talk about 4A real quick, because 4A is the other interesting one, because 4A's championship game will be in St. George. Now, Snow Canyon, Pineview, Dixie makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Get it. Understand they're in 4A. They're going to be there. But then you also have the Cash Valley schools that will be going out there. So home sites for the semifinals or neutral fields or it might be home sites. But then championship game down in St. George. So 4A and 5A championship games will be in St. George. 6A to be determined neutral field up here. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're Skyview, who is one of the top teams in all of 4A, it's then like they're a trip to chance. Hawaii, yeah. man. I mean, you're going to be like. <laughs> that is a bowl game. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I get it. That won't make sense. I now, get it. Now they're, they're just, playing home sites in the semis. Well, I was going to say, now they're just hoping one of their region rivals doesn't get to the championship <laughs> so they get stuck in the Arctic for a hey, championship All game. I know is they, if they get matched up at semifinals down in St. George, we'll be there too. <laughs> so uh, well, we're going to have you take care of there. But uh, just so you know, all those championship games, Deseret News Rewind, we will broadcast yeah. all of those games. So the, four, the 5A, 6A semifinals, the 4A, 5A, 6A championship game, and depending just because of logistics yep. of where 4A is. We'll also have the 4A semifinals most likely as well, but that's to be determined for us. Yeah. But we're excited to have it. Now, let's make sure the RPI part, I don't wanna to go too deep on this, but RPI did make a change this year, Dane. We wanted to make sure we explain that to yeah. you because some of the things I said a couple of weeks ago wasn't 100% accurate. That being that if you're a 5A school playing 6A and how this is all gonna work out in the end, 4A, 5A, 6A, Dane, they all get the same points. Yeah, they all have the same weighting. So remember last year, you know, if you came a classification down, you had like one free game, and then that game was actually weighted differently than if you were playing your same classification. That's changed this year. So 4A, 5A, 6A, all grouped with the same weighting for their games. 2A, 3A grouped with, or uh, have the same grouping for their two classifications. So really you just have the two different weighting systems, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A. I think that makes it a lot cleaner. Yep. I think it takes away a lot of the, um, Dis disincentive, right? 
to yeah. not play a lower classification. And it helps Tim Few and Orem. It does. And you have some of those schools. rivalries in place where it's like, we want to play them. And this no longer penalizes you for doing so. I think it's a great move by the association. Uh, we talked about the 45-45-10. They also changed how they're dealing with the out-of-state teams a little bit this year. So like Summit Academy, I know a couple weeks ago we said, oh, we think the RPI hasn't been updated. There's an error. No, it was just fine. Summit Academy had lost a game, but their winning percentage was still 1.05 because they had defeated a higher classification team in an out-of-state. And so the way that that all worked, they ended up still having a winning percentage above one, even though they had a loss. I think these are positive changes. I think we've seen positive impact in the RPI this year. Now, I mean, this week, I know we're going to have Region 4 folks that are like, why is Sky Ridge still number one? Because they are. I mean, that's the way the math worked, right? And I know they lost to Lone Peak. They'll get a shot this week to try to defend that number one ranking against Corner Canyon. We'll talk about that game in multiple videos. But I think it's positive changes, but I think it explains some of what we've seen in the RPI in the first couple of weeks of its release. And it's interesting. We want to make sure we explain that too, yeah. because when we got that explained to us, I, I know what, it's real. And it goes to our relationships that we build. We don't have to agree, <laughs> yeah. but we like each other and we share information yeah. and it's, it's a positive thing. So if you agree with us, awesome. If you don't, just be nice. Yeah. Let's we'll just be cordial and just understand that we may agree to disagree, but that's totally fine. All right, Dane, our game of the week, you had this one, Lone Peak and Sky Ridge. You talked about Sky Ridge. This was an interesting one and a major, major statement for Lone Peak. Yeah, it was, Dusty. And, you know, for me, the big question was, you've got McKay Hillstead, the sophomore. Could Lone Peak get pressure on him? That was the whole question for me going into this ball game. And the opening drive, the answer to that question was no. How about McKay Hillstead? I mean, he's got a couple of just absolute beautiful 30-yard throws here, dropping right over the defense. You can't play that any better if you're Lone Peak. It ends up being capped off a two or four-yard touchdown pass to Jack Hadfield. And we're just three minutes into this ball game. It's seven nothing Sky Ridge. Lone Peak, you know, the offense, Dusty, trying to establish the run, get things going. They'd have to settle for an early field goal. Seven to three. Second drive of the ball game for McKay Hillstead. They have this ball near midfield. And oh no, intercepted that one. You see the pressure getting to Hillstead from the backside. It impacts the throw. Lone Peak able to pick it off. And a couple plays later, it'd be Luke Durfee, 28 yards out to close out the first quarter and give Lone Peak a 10 to seven lead. A pair of field goals in the second quarter for Lone Peak makes it 16 to seven as that Lone Peak defense continued to get pressure on Hillstead, really shut down that Sky Ridge attack after that interception. We head to the second half and Sky Ridge, Dusty, first drive of the second half for the Falcons, much like the first drive of the first half for the Falcons is it was Hillstead able to connect with Hadfield, 21 yards out, Sky Ridge right back in this ball game at 16 to 14. The Sky Ridge defense, Dusty, played much better in the second half, did a great job of limiting Lone Peak's effectiveness. How about this, Sky Ridge with the ball and they're looking deep to the end zone and to Kale Hansen with a huge interception. What a pick this was in the end zone to keep Sky Ridge off the board from taking the lead uh, in the third quarter. Fourth quarter, the Lone Peak off Offense set up with a short field and Jackson Willits. It's a 14 yard touchdown run, pushing that lead back up to two possessions. What answer will Sky Ridge have? This offense, Dusty, trying to get things going. The turnovers really hurt him. How about McKay Hillstead here? A third down play and Hillstead using the legs. We talked about his athleticism, but my goodness, a scary moment at Lone Peak. We don't have it on this angle, but there was another angle that we saw at the stadium from behind and he comes down right on the crown of his head. It was a scary moment. It was the most quiet I've heard that stadium maybe ever. Uh, he was fortunate able to get up, walk off under his own power. We would not say see McKay Hillstead the rest of the game. McKay, hope that you're doing okay uh, and that all is well there. Looked like it was okay, but um, a scary moment there. So then they bring in uh, Keone and the backup got pressure, pressure, pressure. This Lone Peak defense just relentless getting pressure on him and eventually it'd be a, a throw from Keone picked off uh, by Durfee, a big return on the play, and it'd be a short touchdown run for Jackson Willits. Able to push this game out to uh, a 16-point advantage for Lone Peak. Keone did a great job after that first drive, kind of felt like his feet got wet, was able to get some things going for Sky Ridge, had a 28-yard touchdown pass to James Palmer. The two-point try here to try to keep it a one possession or make it a one-possession game. Lone Peak was ready for it. The defense shut him out. It's 30 to 20. A garbage time touchdown for Lone Peak makes it 37 to 20. Your final score. That Lone Peak defense, Dusty. We talked <laughs> about how good it was. They showed it last week against Corner Canyon. They put all sorts of pressure. Really outside of those two drives to start the game and the second half, uh, they had pressure in the backfield all night long. I think they had like eight sacks as a unit. 
I lost track. I think that John Henry Daly had four of them himself. If that's true, he's got 15 and a half sacks on the year through eight weeks. He's been a terror. But Gunnarsson, uh, you think of Durfee, uh, Oborn, yeah. Durfee, all those guys, they just create havoc. Coach Brockbay said, well, we like to hit the quarterback, hit him hard, and hit him often. They did that on this Friday night, and it was pivotal in the win over Sky Ridge. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a Bronco fan. I don't know many people who are. But they do the thing at the end of the third down, the K-O-D, right? Kiss to death. If I were alone, peak, you're J-H-D, because – when John Henry Daly takes yeah. a sub, and I love making sure you know this, sub 11 second 100 meter speed around the edge, yeah. good luck. I mean, and good night. I mean, just, just for a sense, McKay Hillstead was thrown 67% completion percentage, 22 touchdowns, and I think four interceptions coming into this ball game. Threw two picks, and at halftime, his completion percentage was 40%. It probably didn't finish much above 50 when that game got sent down. Again, he left with an injury. But uh, that's just how good this Lone Peak defense was. And even the passes that he completed, we showed it. I mean, <laughs> he's just dropping that right over the defense. This young man is talented. I'm going to say the best sophomore in the state this year in the quarterback position. We're going to see him again, I have no doubt, but uh, it was just a tough night for that Sky Ridge offense to get much traction. Well, big, big win for Lone Peak. Huge, We're going to give us some more ups later, but uh, congratulations to Coach Brockbank and yeah. the Knights. Bounce back after that game against Corner Canyon. Got to give them that right pep. Right. Uh, Sky Ridge doesn't get any easier for either one of these yeah, two. Yeah. Is, uh, look at the schedule video. We'll talk about <laughs> both of those two. <laughs> All right, let's go to best of 6A. Why are we here? Because Riverton did something that the seniors of Riverton have never been alive to see. Riverton beat Bingham in football the first time since 2003. Man. I was in Pennsylvania the last time they beat, <laughs> they beat uh, Bingham in football. And uh, it was during the first stint of Coach uh, Daypeck, but it was a huge night for Riverton. Jackson Bennett had a game clinch, well, I guess went ahead. Terrific back shoulder catch for the touchdown. Uh, Bingham driving down the length of the field inside the five. And uh, just untypical of uh, Bingham coughs it up. Turnover. Riverton gets it. Seals the game. And uh, six turnovers from the Bingham Miners. Wow. Six of them. And Riverton snaps a 17-year losing streak. Coach Jody Morgan was fired up for good reason. Yeah. His boys got the job done. And how about this? Remain undefeated in Region 3. I'll tell you, it sets up a big game. Coming up, I think this week actually, I think Easton Riverton played this week and he's trying to hang on uh, to compete for a region title. Big one. That was Congratulations, big one. Coach yeah. Morgan and the Silver Wolves. Hey, my best of 6A, Dusty, I'm going to take us up north. Man, this feels good. This feels like the Dane of old, right? Not talking about Region <laughs> 4 every week. Hey, look, Davis and Weber, a big time game in Region 1, Dusty, and the Weber Warriors. How about this group? They come out, they start sizzling in this ball game. I think they're up, what, 17 0, 24 0? 24 7. Something like that. Just unreal the start for the Weber Warriors. And all the talk about Canada Rice, who had two receiving touchdowns in this ball game. How about the night from Jake Lindsay? Uh, or his stats, 15 of 23, 278 yards, three passing touchdowns. And, uh, oh, by the way, he also ran for over 100 yards in the win for the Warriors. Trujillo had a bit of a tough night, wasn't able to throw a touchdown pass. Spencer Ferguson does what he does for Davis. 174 too yards. Little, too little, too late. Weber with a big region win, and it sets up region championship game coming up this week. Hey, might be there for that one. Roy and Weber, and uh, Roy still undefeated. Weber, one loss behind him, trying to even up and create a uh, co-region championship in Region 1. You know what I loved about that, that win for Weber? They cough up the lead of 24-7, go down 26-24. Yeah, and they go get it. 10 play drive. 10 plays 80 yards to, to take the lead. Yeah. Awesome. Just a terrific comeback. Speaking of comebacks, how about Lehigh? They jump out to a 10 to nothing lead. Then DeAndre Randolph has a 97-yard touchdown catch for Alta. And then DeAndre Randolph has a 24-yard touchdown catch for Alta. And Alta takes the lead. Well, have no fear. The Pioneers are here. It was their place. Vapula, 75-yard kick, or pardon me, 75-yard touchdown reception from Creighton, Creighton Cooper. And then in the end, it's Creighton Cooper one yard out for the win. Lehigh holds off Alta. 24-21. Big win for the Pioneers. You know who Lehigh has to thank? Dusty for not picking them. You said, right? Told you. I'm the yeah. mush. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my best of 5A. Dusty, man, I'm going old school today, and it feels good. How about the Bountiful Braves taking on Fremont, a game that was a late schedule due to other cancellations. These two able to connect on a Friday night. Bountiful! This is the Brave offense that we thought we could see from the Braves this year. A 27 to nothing lead on Fremont. A great late charge by Fremont, but just too little too late. 
Boston Mongrels, four passing touchdowns, three of them to Fornelius, and a big non-region win for Bountiful, 41-27 over the Silver, or 28 over the Silver Wolves. Oh, it's like, get the ball to Dubois. Get the ball to Fornelius. Right. <laughs> I'll just change it every week. That's what we do, right? We're the That's media. right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. How about the best of the rest? I think you know where I'm heading. Santo Jorge, actually, let's go to Washington City, shall we? Pineview taking on their foes from Santa Clara in Snow Canyon. How about this, 28 all at the half. Yeah. This game was up and down the field. Fry was going nuts. Jake Hill, by the way, we've got to show this throw. We'll talk about who won this game. But watch this throw from Landon Fry. Zip, zips this one in. Jake Hill makes the catch between two defenders. I, mean, I don't know how that ball got through there. Jake Hill made that catch. Snow Canyon, they, they were going to take care of business. They get a touchdown, go up 35-28. to 28, And then Kotasna, the man from the Bronx. His boys pick it up, block a punt, get the safety, 35-30, take the ensuing kickoff, go down the field, and Enoch Takao, Pakao, gets in the end zone. And they hold off the Warriors, 36-35. Pineview stays atop of Region 9. And what I think we will see either in the semis or a championship game, quite possibly, I'm not saying they're going to, very well could. Skyview have a lot to say about it. But this was a fun one. Pineview wins 36-35 over Snow Canyon. Man, the Warriors had chances. They did. They did. Oh, my schedule video record is hurting <laughs> after that one. Thanks for the reminder, Dusty. Hey, my best of the rest. You know, that's fine. You can talk about that game, and it was a good one. How about a battle of undefeateds in 2A? And wasn't much of a battle. Uh, the Beaver Beavers, folks, taking on Kanab. And this Kanab defense had been stellar all year long, but on this Friday night, Give up seven rushing touchdowns to Beaver. Three of them from Clayton Hollingshed had touchdown rushes of 12, 68, and 43 yards as Beaver. All over Kanab in a game that deciding the region, clearly now deciding who the number one team is in 2A, as if there was any question prior to. They are 2A. Exclamation point. It is the Beaver Beavers with a big win over the Cowboys. Hey, Beaver, I have your new thing. We are 2A. <laughs> Last couple years, that's been true. And it <laughs> I don't tell some in there. Coach Great Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to – actually, let's go to our Riley Jensen Mental Performance Moment of the Week. Where else are we going? Weber. 24-7 yeah. lead. Folks, I was part of a team. We were up 26-6 to at the half. We lost 28-26. I know how it feels. We didn't bounce back. We didn't win. But Weber did. Davis comes back, takes the lead 26-24, uh, and we talked about this, a 10-play 80-yard drive, Jake Lindsay caps it off, and Weber, that takes a lot of mental fortitude yeah. to get this done. Well, and especially, remember, this is a Weber team, and sorry, Warriors, you might want to plug your ears, that lost to Leighton a couple weeks ago. Right. I mean, that was as shocking as they come. What a bounce back, what a response from a team that still sees, hey, we can still go play for a region championship, and it's not going to be easy, but they did a great job bouncing back on this Friday night. Congratulations to Jake Lindsay and the Warriors. Absolutely. Again, our mental performance moment of the week brought to you by Riley Jensen Consulting. If you want help with your athlete, if your athlete needs help just getting over the barriers, hitting their next level potential, Riley's there. If you personally, as a parent, yeah. want to get a little bit better, Riley's a great person to go to. And, of course, if you're a quarterback, I talk about all the time, he's the Trent Dilfer of uh, Utah High School football. Yeah. I mean, he will tell you he wasn't. He struggled and bounced his head off the turf in Washington and things like that, but he understands the quarterback yeah. position, and Riley's there to help your quarterbacks out as well. All right, let's get to quick hits brought to you by the Utah Army National Guard. Need that next step in your life? Over 150 job training opportunities at the Utah Army National Guard. Yeah, Dusty, uh, you can visit nationalguard.com to learn more and earn up to $20,000 in educational assistance as well as $20,000 signing bonuses from the Utah Army National Guard. Sorry, my freaking thing didn't pull up. You're good. You want me to start? What's that? You want me to start? Yeah. Yep. Dusty, I'm going to kick things off this week because uh, I'm tired of you still in the show. <laughs> hey, uh, how about West Jordan and Cyprus, Dusty? The Cyprus Pirates had a lead in this ball game. Looked like Cyprus going to pick up back-to-back -back, uh, wins in region play and get some positive momentum going. A 14-0 second half for the Jags as it was Farmer with two passing touchdowns, both in the second half as West Jordan mounts the comeback to defeat the Pirates 23-20. How about the bounce back from AF the last two weeks? They take the lumps against Sky Ridge, come back, beat Westlake. Then they go into the Grove and just absolutely own this game. American Fork wins this one 41 to 20. Maddox Matson back to his old ways. Maddox throwing touchdown passes to Fisher Ingersoll, uh, Trey uh, Roberts, and uh, we got to mention this though. Darius Clemens did have a 73 yard touchdown catch and run. 
Darius Clemens is, of course he did. Freaking legit. Yeah. Yeah, he's just awesome. But it was a defense from American Ford getting things done. Brandon Bergois, the interception return for a touchdown, and also Parker Jackson, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, as well as AF dominated this game 41 to 20. PG never had a chance. How about, uh, you know, if there's a team, Dusty, that's got to be feeling pretty good about the last couple of weeks. That's the Hunter Wolverines. Remember, they, they fought mm. close with Kearns last week. Well, they had an impressive win uh, on Friday night. Now, they played Taylorsville, but Nathan Swasty, four receiving touchdowns for Swasty in the win. Two pick sixes for that Hunter defense. They were all over the Warriors. Hey, uh, you know what team you talked about in the preseason that you said would be good and they've turned out to be pretty good? The Bonneville Lakers! Do my best, Dane. Bonneville goes into Farmington, gets a 26 to 15 win. Cord Shaw rushed for two touchdowns. Cameron Best. Okay, we got to show his best throw of the night. He goes tight. Denver versus Miami. Takes one right in the freaking chops as he delivered a gorgeous ball. Oh my heavens! I saw that throw and I told Vince and I were in the studio. I was like, Oh my goodness! Best is best is yet to come for this young man as the Lakers get the 26-15 win against uh, Farmington and they're in complete control of Region 5. Region Championship. They play Box Elder this week. It'll be a good one. Hey, how about East and Harriman, Dusty, and what's been a gritty physical rivalry for years. East coming off that loss. Harriman had a big week the week before, but tonight it was the East Leopards, Kafusi, Sula, and Amone all with rushing touchdowns. 22 to 10 East over the Mustangs. Just because you fall behind early doesn't mean you can't come back. We know that from this year, right? How about Richfield? Fell behind 13 to nothing, and then Richfield rattled off 34 points to win 34 to 20 over San Juan. Mrs. Nielsen, you need to whip these guys into shape. I mean, you can't give up leads like that. But Casey Kidding's got a touchdown uh, pass. Rushed for three more, including a 45-yard interception return for a touchdown. That's a full night's work for the Richfield Wildcats. So again, the Wildcats get a 34-20 win against San Juan. You want comebacks? I love comebacks. I got a comeback for you. How about the night for Box Elder? Dusty, I mean, they're playing Woods Cross. The Cats oh, have a lead Woods late. Cross. And my goodness, I mean, if they're... Uh, I was going to say something. I'm, they're I'm up 17-6. to six. If there's a way that you could lose a game in a fourth quarter, Woods Cross has experienced it this year. Yeah. I mean, that's just how the year has gone for Coach uh, Gladwell and the Cats. Buchanan had two passing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown if the box score is correct, but the game-winning touchdown pass to Carson Arnold, 2.13 left to go as Box Elder comes from behind to remain perfect in region play, 20-17 to 17 over Woods Cross. You know, in a game that actually helped me in another video gain some games on Dane, uh, Juan Diego jumped out to a 21-7 yeah. lead, erased by halftime, by the way. 35-21, to 21, the halftime lead for the Morgan Trojans as they win this one, 49-28. to 28. Tanner Belinsky rushed for, had three rushing touchdowns for the Trojans, and Ryder Lish passed for two as Morgan. Had a huge night at Juan Diego, winning 49 to 28. You want to know who's feeling good right now, too? The Devils! <laughs> the Red Devils! How about Springville, <laughs> Dusty? Look, if you play Spanish Fork, it's going to be close, except for this Friday night. Oh, my night. heavens. My goodness, where's this Springville been all year? It was uh, Seth Rigtrip with 18 carries, 116 yards. Five rushing touchdowns. Meanwhile, DeLamas had a rushing and passing touchdown in the win for Springville. They were all over the Dons. Well, we're talking about being all over people. How about Grantsville? Yeah. Grantsville welcoming back Les Hamilton in not a great way. <laughs> Pretty rude, right, actually. Right? <laughs> Quite rude. <laughs> As some academy was bounced, coming back off that great come from behind win last week, Grantsville said uh, nay nay to that nonsense. Down, They were down 20 to 14 at the half, came back in the third quarter, scoring 14 in the fourth quarter, 17 points, uh, closing out that game. Cage Johnson, Gabe Morton. By the way, Mortons like to play football at Grantsville. It's good to see another Morton out at Grantsville. Uh, Hunter Johnson, Caden Kelly, and Nate Wright with the field goal in the end as it was all Cowboys. Boo, 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 boo. Taking that one. A uh, couple games. I'm going to go with this one. How about the night for the Hurricane Tigers over Canyon View? Had to finish 14 to nothing to close out. Come from behind on the Falcons. The Tigers get the 35-28 win. Connor Nilsson, 10-yard touchdown with 26 seconds left. His second rushing touchdown of the night to lift the Tigers to victory. Hey, uh, Brett Beebe likes to catch touchdown passes, and he did it again this week. An 83-yard, actually it was a fumble recovery for a touchdown. He also had a one-yard run and an 84-yard touchdown reception as the Milfordmen, or Tigers as some people might know them, uh, get the nice win against Millard. Meanwhile, Barnes had a touchdown reception that game, too. Younger brother of Bryson. Congratulations. Uh, hey, how about North Sampy?
plain American leadership, but the real story in this ball game, Bulls had, Bulls had two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, but according to Twitter, which we all know is truth, uh, left the game with an injury. <laughs> Landon, hope that you're doing okay. Hope to see you back. Hope it's nothing serious. That's going to be the question for North Sampy this win, but they did get the or this week, but they did get the win on Friday night. You want to know the highest scoring game of the night? Go for it. Parowan and North Severe. Yeah. 48-41. I'll tell you the side here in just a minute. Powered by the arm and legs, the quarterback Hutch Miller. Parowan defeated North Severe in a barn burner. Uh, Miller counted for six touchdowns in the win, four through the air, two on the ground. His final five-yard run with just over seven minutes to go was uh, proved to be the game winner as Parowan. Man, they've gone up and down a little bit this year, but the Rams get the win over North Severe, 48-41. to Ryan McDonald, whomever wrote that, want to give you credit. I want to read. That was, uh, that was really good. I thought of anything else yeah. I would say was not encapsulated as well as that little paragraph. That's why they're writers, right? I suppose. That's what they, that's what they do. <laughs> hey, how about an old school rivalry, Dusty? Up north, Skyview and Logan. Look, the Grizzlies played this game for three quarters really close. The third quarter, things weren't early in the favor of the old uh, maroon and gold. It was a 28-0 third quarter for Skyview. Carlson had two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, both of them to Titus Saxton. As Skyview, 42-11 to over Logan. That third quarter really undid the Grizzlies. Yeah, let's stay up north, shall we? Because uh, we got two teams that are going to really factor into that 4A playoff. How about Ridgeline? Yeah. Ridgeline showed up big. Evan Webb, I'm wondering if he's a Cam Webb descendant. Got to be, right? It's Cash Valley. Caden Cox led the Riverhawks four touching, or four passing touchdowns on the night. Three went to Evan Webb. Um, kind of looking like a Zimmerman to Webb connection from Mountain Crest past right there. But uh, big win for the Riverhawks, 35-28 yeah. over Green Canyon. Got a late touchdown there from the Wolves. Yeah, uh, Dusty, I'm going to go with the game in Region 8. Salem Hills and Provo. It was a Thursday night game, and this game was closer than I thought it would be. Gritty fight from the Provo Bulldogs in this one. Elmer just too much, 333 yards passing with three touchdowns. Uh, he wears number seven. Uh, couldn't be a night complete of threes for Jarrett Elmer, but uh, fantastic night for the senior quarterback as he's able to lift the Skyhawks past the Bulldogs. But let's get to it. The Black Clover looking good. Performance of the week. Dane, let's we'll start with you. Hey, uh, Dusty, for me, we talked about this ball game and the Morgan Trojans, a big win over Juan Diego to remain perfect in region play. How about the night from Ryder Lish? Let me just read you his stats. Plays quarterback, mind you. 11 of 17, 174 yards with a pair of touchdowns through the air. By the way, he also ran for 152 yards on 12 carries and two rushing touchdowns. So uh, needless to say, Ryder Lish, over 300 yards of total offense, four total touchdowns, leading Morgan to a big victory over Juan Diego. He is my Black Clover looking good. Look, there's so many people you can go with. We know Jackson Dart threw seven touchdowns. Uh, my nephew, Noah Kerr, not really my nephew. Uh, Noah Kerr had three of those yeah. for a touchdown. I can go lots of different places. We want to go off the beaten path and we want to spread the love around. We cover so much. We need to go to the games up here. How about going back to that Richfield game, Casey Giddings. 45-yard interception return for a touchdown. He had a 19-yard touchdown catch. He had a 7-yard run and a 24-yard run and a come-from-behind win against Juan Diego. I don't go to Richfield a lot for many reasons. Bad memories on that field right off the freeway, but I want to give some love to Richfield while we get a chance. So, good one. Casey Giddings. Looking good performers of the week brought to you by uh, Black Clover. Again, use that the promotional code DNR20 at checkout and go get you some gear. Yeah. Oh, week nine. We're Coming in up. October. Only a few weeks left of the regular season. Again, if we miss some performances, we know we will yeah. from time to time. This is up on Twitter, at DNewsRewind, at DNRScoreStewart, at Dusty Lister. Schedule video coming out. Top five plays videos coming out as well. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, hit us up. Let us know what we can do better. we got a big, big week coming to you right here on Deseret News Rewind. For Vince Francis and Dane Stewart, I'm Dusty Litster. Thanks for joining us watching Deseret News Rewind on Deseret.com.